So, um, yeah, hello to everybody. Um, I would like to welcome you to our interview session on the online reference linguistic minorities in Europe. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Caroline Eckert. I'm acquisition editor at De Greuter in the field of linguistics, and I will chair this um, meeting today. I'm very pleased to welcome our main editors of LME, um, Lenore Grenoble, Pia Lane, and Un Röneland. Thank you very much for um, being with us. <laughs> um, yeah, before we get started, just some quick technical remarks. Um, I should let you know that this uh, webinar is being recorded. An edited version will be um, uploaded on our YouTube channel later and will be available also on the website of our cooperation partner. Um, the participants of this webinar are muted. Um, but of course, we would like to give you the opportunity to ask your questions. Please put them into the chat. We will come to the questions um, in the last 10 or 15 minutes of the meeting, probably at a quarter to, to six um, Berlin time. Um, yeah, so let's get started and let me introduce uh, briefly our main editors. Um, Lenore Grenoble, she is John Matthews Manley Dis Dis Distinguished Service Professor at the Department of Linguistics of the University of Chicago. Uh, Pia Lane, she is Professor um, of Multilingualism at the Center for Multilingualism in Society across the lifespan, in short, Multiling. Multiling is our cooperation partner in this project. And Un Röneland, she is Professor of Scandinavian Linguistics, uh, also at Multiling at the University of Oslo. Um, yeah, would you like to introduce yourselves with your research profiles? Um, please, maybe we, we start with Lenore. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And everyone, thank you for coming and joining us to talk about this project. We're very, very excited about it. So I work on indigenous languages with indigenous communities, primarily in the Arctic. And I work very much sort of, as I was saying earlier to my colleagues, sort of on the edges of Europe, the far edges. I work in Greenland uh, with the Kalahi suit or Greenlandic language, and then work a lot with indigenous minorities on the Russian side of things. I'm very interested uh, beyond the communities that I work with and the specific issues with their languages. And I'm interested in larger issues of language shift, language vitality and sustainability. And yeah, so, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lenore. Thank you for introducing us, Caroline. So, well, as you heard and can see, my name is Pia Lane, and uh, like Un, I work at Multiling. Uh, my field is, um, well, multilingualism like Lenore in the Arctic, but in slightly different areas. So I work with indigenous Sami languages in collaboration with my colleagues and also with Kven, another um, minority language in Northern Norway. So since I joined the Multiling Center, I have been more interested in not just looking at each language in isolation, but the multifaceted multilingualism in the, in the Northern areas. And I'm also, I have a broad range of interests from, I started with grammatical description and language processing, whereas now I work more with uh, social linguistics and language in society and how individuals see their languages, particularly in revitalization processes. So Un, over to you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for your introduction, Carolyn. Uh, I'm Un Reynelan. Uh, I'm uh, at the same center as Pia. I'm the deputy director of the center. Uh, originally, I'm trained as a dialectologist uh, and um, work on Scandinavian linguistics. Uh, but since uh, I've been at Multiling, my focus has been uh, over the years more towards multilingualism uh, and uh, social linguistics in, in broad. 
Um, I'm working uh, on various uh, topics, but uh, what may be most relevant for uh, LME is my work on Nynorsk, that is a uh, written minority uh, language, and we'll, I think we will get, get back a little bit to uh, Nynorsk uh, later on. Uh, but well, I'm, I, would, I'm, I also work on um, uh, new emerging uh, linguistic practices among youth in urban spaces in, uh, in Oslo. So not only on written language, but certainly also on spoken language. Thank you very much. So um, before beginning the discussion, we thought it would be good to give you a basic overview of LME. And I will try to share um, the presentation now. Yeah, what is LME? LME is a living online reference on indigenous and immigrant linguistic minorities in Europe. It was launched last year. It is co-published, as you have already heard, um, with the Center for Multilingualism and Society for the Lifespan, um, in short, Multiling. Um, the three main editors you already you have already known, um, Lenore, Pia, and Un work together with a group of area editors um, who are responsible for um, the different uh, language areas. Um, we have a group of 13 areas now. Um, LME is a peer-reviewed online reference and it has special multimedia features. We will give you some examples in the following. So um, let's continue um, with the content. Um, I would like to give you just a short overview of its structure in LME. Basically, LME consists of three types of entries. Um, first, there are standardized overview articles on the linguistic minorities handbook like. Then we have detailed research articles on more specific topics. And um, what makes these overview and research articles special is that they include quite a lot of multimedia elements, in many cases documenting the linguistic primary data. And for these primary sources, we have created a third entry type in the online reference. Uh, to give you a better idea of it and to show the benefits of this structure of entry types, we will now go directly into the online reference. Um, so I'll show you a short recording for a first yeah, visual and auditive impression of LME. Yeah, here you can see the starting page of linguistic minorities in Europe online with the search window for a full text search. First of all, I will show you an example for an overview article. Um, I will take the case of Frisian. These are my, re my search results. I will open the article now and scroll down. As you can see, this article is categorized as overview article. Of course, in other cases, um, you will find content which is categorized as research article. Um, here, a contribution written by Iñaki Camino, an overview of Basque dialects. Or, of course, you have primary sources as reference entries. In this case, we have a video. I will give you a very short auditive and visual impression of it. These are people speaking Northern Sami. Okay, apart from videos as primary sources, you will also find images in, as primary sources in LME or, of course, audios in many cases with transcriptions. And we also have text documents as primary sources in LME. 
So let's go back to the Frisian overview article now. Yeah, if here we have uh, our Frisian overview article. If you go to the quotation marks, you will find information on how to cite this article. And then at the beginning of every reference entry, you will find a set of metadata, quite extensive metadata, giving you information on, of course, um, keywords linked with um, the respective content, the language covered in the article, the Glotto code, according to Glottolog, the ISO code, the names of the varieties or dialects covered in the article and so on. You will also find information um, on the question whether the respective language um, is included in the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages. You will find this information here. Yeah, why these extensive metadata? Of course, um, for documentation purposes, but most important because this allows very differentiated searches. Uh, one remark um, regarding the search functionalities, temporarily we cannot offer the advanced search and browse options for LME because the Decoiter website is after the relaunch on the 1st of February currently um, updated. But the search functionalities based on these extensive um, metadata sets will be available very soon. Regarding the overview articles, they have a fixed structure, um, which you can see um, opening the table of contents. Um, every overview article um, begins with an illustrative map showing the distribution of the respective language. Uh, I will now scroll down a bit to show you how the content in LME is arranged. I will begin in this section. Yeah, here's our section standardization. As you can see, um, the content is interlinked with external sources. Here, for instance, you can go directly to TalWeb, which is a website offering different digital tools for the Frisian language. And you can see that the article includes quite a lot of multimedia elements, in this case, uh, images and also some audio material. Um, these audios, for instance, show how to pronounce egg in different Frisian varieties. Let's have a look. I. I. Yeah, the references um, of these primary sources uh, are listed in the reference section. Um, I will go there. Yeah, the material is listed in this section, external sources, where you will find all um, external sources which are not part of the secondary bibliography. The audios in this case are also listed in the section above named related articles sources in LME. They are listed here because the audios exist also as separate um, reference entries in LME. I will show you this following the link of audio three. Yeah, as we have seen, this is a primary source which is included in the overview article of Frisian and which also exists as separate entry in LME, uh, categorized as primary source or audio. Um, at the beginning of this entry, you will find the metadata set um, indicating, uh, for instance, 
the keywords linked with the content, the, the original place of publication, in this case, also the year of recording and so on. Then you will find the sound file. I. And you have information on the related articles or on related other sources in LME. Yeah, the advantage of having these primary sources as separate reference entries in LME is, of course, that this allows very differentiated searches. You can directly search for audio material, combining your search with specific keywords or specific glottocode, for instance. And of course, this is of special value for different research purposes. Yeah, this was the short introduction into um, the online reference linguistic minorities in Europe. Uh, to give you a first impression of it, um, let's go back now to the editors in chief who will comment with more detail on the background of LME. So, okay, we are back here. Can you hear, hear me? Um, yeah, so let's start the discussion. I would like to begin with the history of LME. Um, yeah, as you have heard, Linguistic Minorities in Europe Online is co-published with Multiling, the Center for Multilingualism and Society Across the Lifespan. And my first question goes to Un, who is a Deputy Director of uh, Multiling. Can you tell us something about the research profile um, of Multiling and how you have developed the idea of LME out of this research context? Sure, I'd be happy to. So, um, Multiling, or the Centre for Multilingualism in Society Across the Lifespan, is a centre of excellence funded by the Research Council uh, of Norway. Uh, and we uh, do research uh, on multilingualism uh, very broadly, so, and from many different uh, perspectives, uh, both psycholinguistic perspectives and social linguistic uh, perspectives. And we look at um, multilingual competence, multilingual practices, uh, and also at multilingualism more at the um, level of ideology and at the level of society. So both individual and societal uh, multilingualism um, is what we're looking at. So um, I had to uh, tell you a bit about the, um, the history of how this, how this all started. Uh, it actually goes back uh, eight years uh, to 2013. Uh, we had just started up as a centre um, uh, just some months before the ISB. Uh, ISB is the International Symposium on Bilingualism, and it was held uh, in uh, Singapore. So um, a big group from Multiling uh, went to Singapore to, uh, to attend uh, the conference. And um, at some point, uh, I was just um, uh, in, in uh, some coffee break. I just ended up um, next to uh, a very nice man uh, from De Gruyter. Uh, his name is Uri Tadmore. And uh, Uri and I started talking and I told him enthusiastically about the center. Uh, and uh, he then told me about this idea he had uh, about um, uh, something like LME. So a, um, a series, an on, online, totally online series, where we could include also multimedia content, which of course is not possible in an ordinary uh, journal. So um, I started thinking, well, yeah, sure, minorities in Europe, that's a great idea, but I don't do that much on minorities in Europe, so let's bring in Pia because that's really her field. Uh, and then uh, we also, of course, brought, brought in Elizabeth Lanza, uh, who is the, uh, is the director of, um, of the center. And we all went for a very nice dinner and that's how it started. Uh, so that sort of illustrates that uh, although um, 
although electronic webinars like this is uh, is nice um, those uh, good ideas that may end up becoming something um, further ahead it really sort of needs uh, needs those physical uh, meetings so a big thanks to Uri Tadmore for for having had this idea and uh, and it's been a long way that it also illustrates that you know building up something like this takes a long time so LME was launched uh, last year in October not with a big splash that we had hoped uh, we were going to uh, to have uh, a big event at Isla, uh, but unfortunately, of course, that wasn't possible. So we're very happy now to have the possibility, at least here, to talk a bit about LME. Yeah, thank you Un, to, uh, for giving us some uh, insights in, yeah, uh, into the history of the project. Um, yeah, maybe um, the next question um, goes to Pierre. Um, yeah, which languages do you have in mind when uh, speaking of minority languages? Could you give a... Yeah, well, that is the question that really goes to the heart of, of the series. So please note that the, the name of the series is Linguistic Minorities in Europe, not from Europe or of Europe. So, and what that means is that we are interested in both indigenous, autochthonous, historical, territorial, but also immigrant languages. Because when you listen to the research profiles of the three of us, you could see that, you know, we work with, we have worked a lot with like historical uh, minority languages, but I would like to underscore that the scope of, of our series is much, much broader. And we have been very fortunate. You can see on our um, on our web page that we have our, our edit, editorial board that have been us invited because they cover different fields, and we are really happy to have this excellent board uh, supporting us. So, so to reiterate, well, the series is interdisciplinary. Uh, we will get more back to that when Lenore will talk a bit about the, the structure of our series a bit later. But I would also like to underscore that we, we see like all minority languages in Europe are of interest to us. When Caroline uh, presented the series, the little video that, that she showed, you could have, you saw that she meant there was a, an abbreviation <laughs> to the U European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages. So this is a charter under the auspices of the Council of Europe. And if we have viewers, uh, not everybody knows what the Council of Europe is. So I will just give a super brief explanation. It's, it is not the same as the European Union. The Council of Europe was founded after the Second World War, and it is an institution that promotes uh, human rights, peace, and human rights, democracy, and the rule of law in Europe. They have several charters and frameworks, and one of them that protects and promotes uh, languages that have a long history of belonging in Europe, but are not, not national languages, is the, this charter that I mentioned. So we often refer to that as the charter. So for each language, we specify uh, whether the charter is protected, whether there are specific languages protected by the charter or not, and what level of protection uh, it has. So, so just to summarize, you know, to summarize, I think I would say that we are interested in, you know, indigenous languages like Sami and Basque, uh, but also lang minority languages that might be a majority language in another country, such as, for instance, uh, German is a minority language in Denmark and Hungarian, which we have articles from is a minority languages in many nation states in in Europe and we are also interested in what we might call immigrant languages for instance Turkish and there are some languages that are a bit in an in between positions so they might have some sort of official status like Irish 
uh, for instance, which is a national language in Ireland, but a minority language, at, at least outside the Gaeltacht, the Irish speaking areas in in uh, Ireland. And I apologize to any Irish colleagues watching. That was a very simple, <laughs> simplified explanation. And Nunosk in Norway is also uh, in an in-between position. And some uh, would argue that it's not a minority language at all. So uh, that is also an issue, what falls within and what falls without. And you, yeah. you're using minority language, but there is another a term that uh, that is now uh, very much in use, and that is minoritized uh, languages. Maybe you could say a bit about that, Pia. Yeah, well, the term which minoritized languages, which is actually often what I use myself when I write, uh, we have a lot of our researchers working in the field. We felt a little bit uncomfortable with the term minority language because my minority for whom? So a, a language might not be uh, my, a minority numerically in a region. But the issue is also uh, there's a political and social dimension to this. So these languages become minoritized because of processes in society, which, which can be intended, like trying to weaken minority languages or trying to promote national languages and suppress the smaller of all what would be seen as peripheral languages, but also that languages lose foothold because of general socioeconomic developments. So, so the term minoritized is used precisely to highlight that minority is not just numerical and it's not a neutral term either. So perhaps we should pass this on to Lenore because we, we wanted to tell you a little bit more about, you know, how we've actually structured the uh, uh, LME. Yes, thank you, Pia. And I think that this, this whole notion of minority minoritized gives uh, some sense to our audience about how complicated the structure is and how we hope to contribute to the ongoing research into these questions with, with this resource. So the uh, structure, Caroline demonstrated the Frisian article, we have an overview article that is sort of the um, center for at languages as we expand LME. The overview article contains the background, the linguistic description, demographics, sociolinguistic information, including variation, attitudes. It's structured, as you saw in the demonstration, and you can go look on our website and look at Frisian. We also have the overview article for Sami is up there. The idea that all three of us have had, and I think probably many of the people listening to this, this um, interview have also had, every time we went to write an article about one of the languages that we were working on, we needed to begin with an overview ourselves in each article to inform readers about what that language was because they, a lot of the languages aren't well known, aren't well known outside of specialists uh, and aren't uh, the, the sort of sociolinguistic setting is is a critical part of the work. So the overview article is there, and then there are research articles on a broad range of topics. It really depends very much on what kind of research is being done and uh, who's interested in writing for us. We very much want multimedia to make these articles very alive and see this as a real resource for for readers and researchers using the articles. So we have an overview article that is linked to research articles and then the notion of primary sources, which is a very important part of LME so that users of the database can go, go turn to those primary sources. And also that this is an option for researchers and others, uh, other potential users to contribute their materials to make some of them more accessible to, uh, to other people. So they are out and available. Uh, we saw the clip for Northern Sami and there's lots of other kinds of resources in the database right now. As we grow, we will be adding more and more languages we are trying to get a good spread of those languages. I see questions are popping up in the chat and we'll, we'll be able to answer them, but I hope to keep, you know, uh, answer some of them now. We are targeting as we can languages that, that demonstrate a breadth of 
the different kinds of circumstances. So Basque is in, in LME already, as is Turkish. So we're looking at very different languages with different numbers of speakers, different kind of demographics, different sociolinguistic settings. And C, LME is dynamic and growing. I don't know if Un, Pia, you wanna chime in? Uh, maybe um, just mention that we, uh, and I think Caroline already mentioned it, that we, uh, we work with area editors. So there's some excellent work, uh, area editors that, um, that either write these overview articles themselves or, or get um, uh, other people, uh, prominent people uh, within uh, the field to, to write those overview articles and who also recruit uh, other writers. Um, authors uh, and um, we have um, it has taken some time to build up uh, the base so we've started with uh, with a limited number of uh, of languages and we wanted to start with languages that are slightly different like both Pia and, and Lenora said and I could see that there are questions about what about uh, Asturian and Aragonese and of course, uh, it would be great to include those uh, languages uh, as well. So it's just a matter of finding area editors and people that want to contribute. Um, and uh, there's also a question about, um, about existing publications in the Greuter, and that is actually already a part uh, of LME. So we have included um, a number of articles. Um, I don't remember now the percentage, but Carolyn, I'm sure you do. Uh, of articles that are articles that already uh, have been published with uh, De Greuter uh, about those languages that we have now. Uh, and uh, well, back to you, Len uh, Lenore, about the languages we have now and what we are planning to do. <laughs> so, yes, so uh, you can see with this broad definition of languages, uh, minoritized and minority languages in Europe, there's a tremendous number of possibilities going forward. And so we have, and peanut uh, if I forget something, <laughs> we have Basque, Frisian, Croatian, uh, Turkish, Sami, Hungarian, Nynorsk, which I was, and we are growing with Breton. We will have Romani coming toward the end of the summer. What have I forgotten? I didn't write Russian. This. Russian. Russian and let and me. Kven. Kven and yeah. uh, we will also have articles on Welsh. And hopefully uh, Catalan and Galician. Because we are. In Irish. On, sorry? In Irish. Uh, Irish, yes. <laughs> Um, so we are working on a, a part of developing this is also one of the reasons that it's been a little bit challenging because the, the, the system is different from an ordinary, from a journal. You know, in a journal, you could have a thematic issue with a guest editor or people would submit research articles that, don't necessar that aren't necessarily coherent. Whereas here we work on getting an overview article and then many research articles for each, each linguistic minority. So what that means is that we have to build step by step. So I can see these questions coming in. What about, you know, <laughs> or, you know, my Serbian, Aronese, and, and all, you know, a lot of other languages. And of course, all these languages are would be wonderful to include. So we will build step by step. We can't add 50 new languages in six months. So we will be making a long-term plan as we recruit area editors for what we're going to release in the next, in the next coming years. So, so the languages we mentioned now, they, the articles will be published in, or release, Caroline will have to help me if I'm wrong, in June and November. And we're planning now for 2022. And it's also, we're not just adding languages. So we will continually be adding languages. We're also adding more materials for each language. So uh, it's also, Pia said, this is not like a special issue in many, many ways, because we want the each, each language 
to continue to grow and change. And of course, the situations for these languages are, is, are dynamic as well. So LME is dynamic and we want to reflect those changes and ongoing research. We hope that this will be an inspiration for people to do this kind of research and we'll have a good place to publish it. All of the research articles are peer reviewed and uh, we feel very strongly about maintaining high quality research at Albanian with pleasure. <laughs> Uh, and just to chime in on, on, on the quality here, yeah, I would also again like to underscore the role of our area editors because they really are specialists. And we are totally dependent on area editors who have large networks who know the languages and the groups they are they are working with. Because it's quite obvious that, you know, I couldn't take on the role to to be, get, you know, lead the, the curating <laughs> articles for Serbian or, or, or Albanian, you know, we are dependent on our academic networks and our colleagues who are willing to take on this task. But I, I think I think we've all been very encouraged with the positive support and feedback we got from our networks. So it is I think at least to us quite obvious that LME fills a gap in the market. Um, Question. Uh, and there is another thing we should mention, <laughs> and that is that uh, you can, I think there was a question going that in that direction. Uh, uh, articles in LME can be published bilingually. So, and we have uh, that coming up now, several of the Basque articles that have already been published uh, in English will now be published in Basque. So you can go back and forth between uh, the two versions. Uh, so that is a possibility for authors to uh, publish in, uh, in the original uh, language and, and in English. Yeah, thank you. I think um, you have illustrated very well the, that LME is a living and grow, growing and very dynamic project. Um, yeah, um, there are some questions in the chat now. Maybe we can go um, to some of them now. Um, yeah, of course, people want to know how they can contribute. And maybe you can um, explain uh, um, from which fields um, can the contributions come from and um, yeah what are the topics um, you would like to, um, to to publish what you are interested in <laughs> we're interested in uh, in, Everything. A broad range, in a broad range of, of, uh, of topics uh, so um, research articles covering uh, anything from psycholinguistic research, social linguistic research, uh, documentary, uh, uh, documentary, no, documental uh, research. Documentary. What? Documentary or documentation. <laughs> documentation, yeah. Uh, also more sort of grammatical um, uh, papers. Uh, I think what we, what we do look for are articles that also include some of the source material so that that's the uniqueness you know when you read an ordinary article uh, about this minority or minoritized language you wouldn't know what, what what does it sound like what does it look like where these people uh, live or you know um so being able to include that type of um of material is quite unique uh, and something that um and we're not forgetting occitan no <laughs> I'm just sometimes looking at the at the things. There are lots of interesting questions in the chat, and maybe we should turn to the chat uh, now. What do you think, Carolyn? Yeah, maybe just I will just add um, a more technical aspect. If you want to contribute to LME, please go to the product page um, of the online reference, and to the there you will find a tab which is named a submission. And uh, there you will find our uh, current call for papers. We are looking for contributions um, for some specific language areas, um, Basque, Breton, Croatian, Frisian, Hungarian, Irish, Ninorsk, the Sami languages and Turkish. For these languages, 
Um, we are currently uh, looking for contributions and the next um, submission deadline will be at the end of May for a publication in November 2021. Um, important to say is that um, we have uh, two updates every year um, for LME. One update, ah, we have already mentioned this, I think one update in June and the second one in November. Yeah. Um, so I, I see there was a question about small, small minority languages, which is a question that's near and dear to my heart. We, we are interested in all these languages, regardless of num number of speakers. And certainly with the Sami languages, where we have one overview article for all the many Sami languages, some of them have more speakers and some of them have fewer speakers. So we are interested in that. In the beginning of building LME, we started with uh, languages where we were confident that there was already a fair amount of research going on. So we could build something to illustrate the concept to everyone. And uh, because we felt that we needed to show you some of the richness of what we had in mind. And it does, um, the content, it, it, we're, we're sort of asking people to rethink some things because we care so much about multimedia. And that means writing a little bit differently sometimes than what we are used to for print journals anyways. But yes, we uh, were, uh, uh, unbiased in terms of what languages we're, we're interested in. We like, we, we like everything. <laughs> uh, and no, no language is too small. Because I think this is also one of the really positive things with aspects of this series is, you know, people who do research on very, on the small, small, very small languages, like it may sometimes feel that there isn't a good venue for my publications. Uh, so if that, if you one of them, I would say that LME is is your home. Come to us. <laughs> but what we do do, uh, uh, Caroline mentioned that we issue call for papers because we would really like to have like an overview article first, so that we we sort of build in in a way in a batches uh, with these with these uh, languages. I'm sort of trying to read questions in the chat, but it is yeah. a little so, bit overwhelming. <laughs> so um, the questions of L1 versus L2 speakers, we're actually very interested in L2 speakers. And I'm sorry if we didn't give that impression because of the way we are thinking of minority and minoritized languages, met, quite often the speakers are L2, L3 speakers, new speakers, we're interested in that rich spectrum of, of speakers. And, um, and we're, we're also historical studies. If some of you, if you look at some of the Basque articles, you will see that there's, uh, I'm just saying that off the top of my head, there may be others. So I, I don't mean to insult any authors I'm forgetting, but you'll see there's some really interesting uh, sort of uh, more historical things, development of Basque, Basque in the theater. So we're really, we're interested in, in things that have to do with how these languages are used, uh, how they're spoken, yes, descriptions, and, and there's some, uh, you'll see there's quite a range of materials there, which is why LME is so expansive. So there is actually a question about that, about open access. And I think back when we started to work on LME, uh, the issue of open access was not, um, it was not something that was discussed as much as it is uh, today. Uh, and as much as I would have loved, and I think all the editors would have loved this to be uh, open access, um, it's, not, but we um, we do uh, choose uh, a number of articles um, each. I don't know how often we can change that, Carolyn, <laughs> but we have had some, and now we have uh, every five, every update at every update. So at least there are five six articles that are open access, but to have access to the whole series. Um, uh, that is not, uh, unfortunately, uh, open access, but uh, depends on the kinds of um, 
uh, of agreements that um, that the Greuther has with individual universities and and so on. Um, but uh, you can, as an author, um, have hybrid, uh, what you call hybrid open access. So uh, that would mean that you could, I don't know how much that would cost, Caroline, maybe you could say something? Um, of course, it is possible, as it is a hybrid database, to publish articles open access. And um, yeah, in this case, uh, we would charge an um, APC, article processing charge, it is, as it is the usual way. And yeah, uh, it depends on um, yeah, it depends on the the APC level, um, which is yeah currently uh, used at Degreuter. At the moment, it's at two thousand euros plus um, a VAT, but it's yeah the the normal uh, amount for um, APCs in in journals and in databases. Um, but uh, important to mention is that um, primary sources for instance, can be published open access without any fee. We won't charge any fee for this. So also authors have the possibility to um, publish their um, primary source material open access within LME. And another important aspect is that um, authors retain their rights um, for these primary source um, materials. Um, yeah, and um, as you have sa said, we uh, always offer some free access articles um, on the web page. But these articles are, um, yeah, free access and not open access articles, with uh, what means that they don't come with an open access license. But um, currently, you can find, for instance, the Frisian and the Sami overview article. Um, for, for free um, in LME and some other research articles. I do you want to address one of the questions of the chat, maybe? If I could just make, uh, make a comment. We have got some questions that are um, re related more to the type of research or research related questions like what causes a threat to to smaller languages how do you define version uh, you know what aspects of ninos will be conservative or not and i i think th these are questions that will be addressed in our research articles uh, we can't promise that all the questions will be will be addressed but what i try to say is that we will uh, primarily answer the questions in the chats related to the series. We got one question that I thought, I don't think we can answer it now, but I thought it was a very good comment. So, uh, Caroline, we will look into that later. Uh, would it be possible to interlink LME with other publications by the Hoetet? I We probably don't know that now. <laughs> So that will have to be uh, have to be dealt with later. Uh, we got a question about you know what what uh, open access means. So what open I, when you publish in a journal, most academic journals are closed. So you are dependent on your university subscribing to it. So they have pay an annual fee to the publisher. And then the articles are available if you're in a university network. If they are open access or what we call free access, uh, that means that anyone can read them. So you do not need a subscription. You don't need to pay uh, to read the article. Um, yeah, maybe to comment on the, the interlinking question, of course, um, the content in LME is heavily interlinked and um, yeah, we already have links to other um, research materials to, to other articles from De Reuter or, or other sources. Um, yeah, um, but of course, uh, it depends on uh, the access, um, whether they are open access or not, um, uh, how it, it works in the, in the specific case. 
So, um, other questions? There's a question there about uh, creation. When I when we say creation, what do we mean by that? And that is, of course, uh, <laughs> extremely uh, good question and a difficult one. Um, and it is addressed uh, in in the overview uh, article, of course, uh, as um, as uh, Isiodora says in her comment. Um, that uh, Serbian and Croatian are very uh, closely related. Uh, so, um, but these are issues that are brought up in both research articles and, of course, in the uh, overview article. So, uh, but they are, they are um, so it is difficult to where to draw the line between what's, what's this language and what's the next. That's, uh, we know that, of course. Um, and that goes for, for many, uh, many languages and, and language areas that we have these continua. Um, I see one of the questions we got was, what about all the African languages spoken in Europe? Do you intend to include them? And the answer would be yes. <laughs> this, this relates to the, you know, the, it, this is linguistic minorities in Europe. And in terms of the history of minority languages, yes, uh, we are also, we do include that some of the history of an individual language may be in the overview article. And then there, uh, we certainly welcome research articles that look at that as well. Sometimes, of course, there's not audio if we go back very far, but there's great historical documents uh, and uh, really interesting timelines can be built. Um, we have, you know, there's just a lot of creative things that people can do to, to illustrate those histories. But yes, we're very much interested in that and interested in how the, the minority languages really are today. So we don't focus solely on the present. I think one of, one of the um, open access articles now is a Basque article that looks at the history of the grammars of, uh, of Basque and has this fascinating timeline, um, uh, animated timeline that I would really encourage you to look at. It's a very good yeah. article. But also when it comes to the call that is out now for contributions for the groups we, or languages we have listed, our research articles, are they are very open. So, you know, as Lenore mentioned, it's not just, Lenore and Un mentioned, it's not just like, current issues, historical contributions are welcome. Uh, we are interested in psycholinguistics, uh, social linguistics. Uh, we have an article on one of the research articles on Sami to be published is, is an article on phonology with, with sound samples. So, so for the research articles, uh, the, the, the topic is open. So that is up to the author uh, submitting their article. Yeah, we've got some really interesting articles on language acquisition and, and acquisition in the classroom. Uh, so everything is quite open there. Yeah, um, we have uh, two minutes. <laughs> um, somebody asked about um, Esperanto. Could you comment on this maybe? And then, uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, we shall end the, the discussion. What about Esperanto? Sure. Lenore? Sure. Sure. I mean, there's, there, there's speaker communities of Esperanto, so it qualifies. There is another question for you, Lenore, about yeah, the, the, lim uh, lim the limits of, of Europe. West and East. <laughs> Where does Europe this. end? <laughs> We've discussed I, this a lot. I keep uh, directed that question to me because I keep asking that a lot, and uh, we haven't really defined it. Rich, we don't know, but certainly any any country that's part of the EU or trying to be part of the EU is is Europe, uh, and I certainly include Greenland since it's part of. Uh, despite moving more and more towards autonomy, it's still under the the Kingdom of Denmark. Uh, although geographically part of North America. So uh, I don't know where Europe ends, but we're... 
It's a good question. Just it's like, like the language dialect question a little. Uh, it's a good yeah. question, but not with an easy uh, answer. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. For this reason, yeah, um, there's still a lot to do <laughs> for this um, great project. And yeah, I would say, um, yeah, our time is over, unfortunately. Thank you very much um, to everybody uh, for joining us. Thank you to Lenore, to Un, to Pia for um, coming, for um, yeah, sharing their ideas, their ideas with us. And yeah, of course, we would be happy if you visited um, the LME website. I put the, the link into the chat. Um, you will find there are some free access articles, the Frisian one, for instance. And But please bear in mind that um, the website is currently being updated and the advanced search and browse, browse options will be available soon. Um, at the moment, we, we only offer um, a full text search. Um, yeah, so thank you very much to all of you. And um, yeah. For questions. Thank you for all great ideas we're getting in the chat. Yes, thank you. We, yeah. we will uh, store the chat, Caroline, so that we, we will can store, keep everything we, in mind here. Yeah. Of course, we will store the chat. We will, um, yeah, um, maybe you can address your questions via email. Um, you, you will find our contacts on the LME website, the Decoiter contact as well as the, the mail addresses of, of our editors. Yeah. Thank you, Lenore. Thank you, Un. Thank you, Pierre. Bye bye. Thank you, Thank you for attending. Bye. Bye.